Okay, so uh, I think we're going to start with the presentation. Uh, I'm going to present you Analyze, which is a learning analytics tool for Open edX. I'm your presenter here, Jose Antonio Rivera de Valiente. I'm a PhD student at Universidad Carlos III of Madrid. I work mainly on uh, educational data mining and learning analytics. I'm really passionate about data, and uh, education is a gorgeous field to work on. And I have lots of hobbies that uh, it's hard for me to content, so I don't much have much free time. I really wanted to keep this presentation neat, uh, not make it too technical, but uh, first set you up about in the context of our research and how we got to, to get to implement Analyze. Uh, and then after that, when you are set in the context, we will describe the architecture of Analyze. I'll show you Analyze and um, present a bit of ideas of which really is analyzed right now, uh, where, we, we are, where we're trying to go. So a bit of a research context. Yeah, so maybe there are not many researchers for what I've seen, many people from companies. Uh, and to set you up a bit for about uh, where we are working, uh, there are lots of uh, e-learning platforms, virtual learning environments over the last years. Um, they all generate of so often uh, uh, great large amounts of data, which most often remain unused in the databases. And in order to be able to obtain something useful of, from this data, you have to make some kind of processing in order to, to make some useful metric that can be used for the, for the different stakeholders of the, of the learning process. So uh, this is a bit of a learning analytics process of the way I, we see it, where we have a generation and data collection of the, of the educational data events. Then we have to make a, a, some kind of processing stage where we uh, transform this event in something us useful. You can go, even go a step further and apply uh, a statistical analysis to obtain a deeper insight about what, what that means in the learning process. And once we have this information, we are able to uh, do something, either visualize, make recommendation, or a, a report generator. So in this context, in this process, we've been working uh, as part of our research in all these steps, but concretely analyze, focus on first the generation and data collecting, which is done logically by Open edX. Uh, we make the data processing of these raw events, and then we uh, visualize it by the visualization dashboard. So a bit more of a, about our background context, we have started using uh, Khan Academy as a support for the uh, zero courses that are taken by, by freshman students at Universidad Carlos III. Uh, we used the open source version of Khan Academy of 2012 when it was still open source. Um, and we apply this uh, methodology where students used to take the, the courses in Khan Academy and they take uh, the face-to-face -face lesson at the university. So we used this in 2012, uh, 15 and 14. And this was uh, small private courses of around 100 to 300 students each. So in this context, we uh, decided to implement uh, Alaska, which is another visualization dashboard. Uh, it uh, provided of 20 new visualizations for Khan Academy, which some of them were very interesting uh, about behaviors of students, such as efficiency, uh, more complex behaviors, such as uh, if a student is avoiding hints or is avoiding watching videos and things of the sort. This is also open source. Uh, this is a short demo here in case anyone wants to check. But um, we got very successful results with Alaska. We were able to use it in the real experiences. It was used by teachers and students in the zero courses. Uh, we got a lot of publications, and we are still going on with this research. We got several, several invited talks, uh, awards at the national level. And if you are in more interested in this, you can access this URL. But the bad side is that Khan Academy was no longer open source, so this was like a project uh, hit a, 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 a problem. We couldn't go on because this would be only for us. Uh, we decided to, to move on. And about this time, uh, edX released uh, this, the code. They make it open source as uh, the project open edX. So we thought this was a perfect situation. We started researching on this. And uh, um, we also joined the edX consortium, the university, who are uh, giving moves. And we also selected Open edX, Open edX for, the, for the private courses that we are giving the new, in the university. So we, this was a perfect situation to make a switch. And this was the beginning of Analyze. This is where, where we started. 
So these are the people which is involved in the in the project. We are really trying to be resourceful. Resourceful. I feel very envious when I talk with most of the people here, which have uh, developers full time working on, on this. Uh, the researchers that are uh, at the university are this: me, uh, Pedro Muñoz Merino, and Carlos Delgado Clos. And we've been uh, using, sort of using, uh, getting use of uh, students who want to make a master thesis or something of the sort in order to prepare a project for them and, and try to get some implementation done uh, thanks to the students. Uh, these are the, in the current release of Analyze, these are the, the other two students who have worked on it. Uh, we already uh, have uh, more students who have developed their projects, but these are not yet in the current release and we are working in, in, in more projects. So here I present you Analyze, which stands for uh, the add-on of the learning analytics support for the open edX. It provides uh, 12 new visualizations for instructors and students, where they are divided in uh, three different uh, sections, visualization for problem, visualizations for, access for videos, and visualization for course activity. Um, we wanted to make it as uh, independent as possible from the, from the code for OpenEdX, but at the same time to be certain that it's in the, in the, in the, in the interface of OpenEdX, so it's not a separate application or something of the sort. So we decided at the time to make a, a new Django app in the LMS, uh, which uh, give, provided these uh, requirements that we wanted to have. This Django app will directly uh, mine the databases, the MongoDB and the, and the MySQL with a, a schedule, and store the results so they are ready to, to be displayed after that. And we use also Google Chat's API for visualizations. It's also open source. So this is a, a bit of a, a raw uh, overview of the architecture of Analyze. So we do, we do have a salary bit of the scheduler which will uh, access uh, and send the task to the, to the analytics uh, API that we have generated and put the background job, in the background job of Celery. The, the API analytics will uh, mine the MySQL and MongoDB, uh, make the processing, and then through the models that we have developed for analysis, I started back in MySQL, so it's very fastly accessible to, to represent the different visualizations. And then we have uh, the, the front end, the visualizations, that would be the, the back end. The front end, uh, we have uh, visualizations individual, which are for each student of the course, for groups of students, and also for the class, for the entire class. So as students are able to watch only their own information, uh, instructors are able to watch everything. So they can use the, the application for more things, and students can, can use it mainly for self-awareness. So the, the Django app, which is for analyze, also have uh, their own uh, static files, just templates, uh, CSS, uh, JavaScript code, etc. And every time a visualization is uh, requested, uh, we send an Ajax request to the, to, the, to the business logic, which will access MySQL and so only the, the one that we are, the visualization, that the information that is requested. And the Google Charts, which is the API, the external API that we are using for <coughs> visualizations. So uh, you can also access more information here. This is a, the open source repo, repo in GitHub. We have also made a, an evaluation and accessibility survey of the application uh, in which we got really good results on accessibility and also usability. Well, we put uh, to 40, 40 respondents to make tasks and they had to be able to answer questions about the course uh, in order to watch in visual, visualizations. Here is also a video demo, a short video demo of the app. And uh, talking to you now about the experience where we have test uh, analyze. Uh, it was a high school for education. I forgot to mention that uh, here that in the European Conference on Technology Enhanced Learning, which was a month ago or so, it's one of the most important conferences in educational technologies. We won the, the second place in the Best Demo Award for analyze. Uh, so in this MOOC of maths, it, was the, it has the specificities that is for ed, adult education. Uh, there was a, a, a project between this high school, uh, CEPA Sierra Norte, in which they developed the, the contest, 28 videos and 52 exercises. And the Universidad Carlos III was in charge of making the configuration, support, pro, um, putting in analyze, and um, personalization of, of the OpenEdX instance. 
Um, we use a flipped classroom, me flipped classroom methodology. Um, we just knew that we won a, a pedagogic innovation award at UC3M because of the of the use of uh, for a high school in uh, adult education with the use of a MOOC technology, flipped met flip classroom methodology, and also analytics. So in this MOOC and in other courses, we believe that uh, analyze can be used for several things. It can be used for self-reflection for students. It can be used also to support the flipped classroom model because there are few students and the, st the instructor needs to know more about what's happening for these students. It can be used also to evaluate each one of the students individually. It can be used to detect problems in the different resources as well as uh, exercises and videos. And it can be used to have a, a, a overall idea of the, how the course is going and evaluate the different sections and the, and the course overall. So let's show you now uh, the application in this specific context. I'm gonna log in one uh, account with, uh, with a, a student's account in, which, in one browser and in the other one with the instructor's account. Uh, first, show you a bit of the of the course that I've been talking about. This uh, typical, it's a bit cut, but it's okay. This is a typical course with different videos, different exercises. There are three uh, units, sorry, three sections. Uh, one uh, one detail is that we talk with the instructors to put only one resource in each one of the verticals. So we would have uh, the time spent in each one of the in each one of the educational resource individually. So probably uh, you are aware that this is the the chart that is able for for students in Analyze. Uh, sorry, in uh, in Open edX. and we have here a new tab, which is the tab for the learning analytics that we can access as a student, and we would be able to see each one of the visualizations, but for 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 the student only. So we would have here, the, for example, the student grades, different visualizations. So the main difference with the, with the instructor dashboard is that uh, we are able to see our information. If, if we go to the, to the instructor dashboard, we will see that there is a combo box in which we are able to select uh, the, different, the different students of the course. So here I have a combo box. I can select the different students of the course. I could go to this same student, and we would see that it's the same information of this student. So a bit about the visualizations that are available. Uh, for example, we have the course summary in which we, we are able to see in each one of the units the percentage of a student who has not done anything, who has failed, uh, who has passed, who has achieved proficiency. We would, we would be able to click in and see each one of the, the exercises separately. These are for the, for the scores of the student. It's the, similar to what edX have already, Open edX have already. For example, we could see that this student has uh, good grades on units and geometry, but bad grades in algebra, so maybe she's struggling in this for some reason. This chart would show us the, the percentage of time and the number of minutes that each student has spent in, in each one of the, the problems of the course. If we go to uh, video visualizations, we would be able to see this first visualization, which provides the two metrics at the same time, the different, the different video time, which could be uh, uh, like the progress from zero to 100 that the student has made in the video, and the total video time would also include the, the repetitive parts that students are watching. So if we compare both uh, columns, we'll have an idea if the student is repeatedly uh, watching one section more than another. This is for all the course, but we, you can also ask the other graphs such as one, each one of the students individually. And you are able to see that some students, uh, for example, this one, he's watched repetitively this video, and the others are 100%, which means that he only watched the video once, this kind of information. With this visualization, you are, able, you are able to see which videos are watched repetitively, but not exactly what, the, what intervals are due. So which, this other one, you are able to see exactly that. You, you can watch uh, in each one of the seconds of the course how many times this second of this interval has been watched. So this visualization, for example, follows the, the typical curve that uh, most, of the, 
most of the videos has, which is a decrease, decreasing curve in which students start watching the video, but then they drop out. But there are other, uh, other, other examples, for example, this one, where we can watch here that is a, pie, a peak in which student is uh, repeatedly watching this part. So maybe there's a some kind of problem in this, in this uh, video. <coughs> Analogously to the previous, the one we said about problem, in this one we can um, watch the, the, the number of minutes in, the one, in each one of the problems that the, the student invested. And in this last one about videos, we can see the, the, the different video events that are stored by, uh, by, the, by the tracking logs. In the, in the time. For example, if we check this video, which was Ecuaciones Segundo Grado, we would go here and check that there are a lot of play events and seek to events in this area, which goes accordingly that this part is being watched repeatedly. And lastly, uh, the course activity visualizations. The first one is about the problem and video progression. You can watch uh, the progression of a student across time. The student is working very, uh, very constantly. Of this working in some days only. This one work only for three days and this, then it stop working. Uh, there are other cases. For example, this one has been working a bit more gradually. Uh, in this visualization, we can uh, watch, uh, for example, the number of minutes in video and problems in each one of the days that the student logged into the platform. And in this one, we can watch the course, the number of course accesses for each one of the for each one of the chapters. So, for example, if we remember we had uh, here a student which was called Gemma, which had problems in, in algebra. We can maybe use the other visualizations for support this. Maybe check here if this student access the algebra chapter to go to the same student. And we would see that indeed he has access 10 times this chapter. Uh, so she, she did go to the chapter. And in this other visualization, which shows chapter time, we can also check here and go to, the, to this same student. So we would see that she has spent 61 minutes in the chapter. So probably she's somehow struggling in this chapter, and maybe the, the, the instructor wants to check this out and contact with her. And the last visualization is about the, the percentage of time and the number of minutes in each one of the, of the, of the intervals of the course. Sorry, in the time schedule intervals, in the morning, afternoon, or night. So these are the visualizations implemented in Analyze. And, um, these were just samples that I put here. So the present of analysis is what you just saw. It's a learning analytics dashboard with two new visualizations. We have received uh, interest from lots of institutions and researchers. But we, as I said, we don't have the manpower. We don't have developers hired to do this job. Uh, it can be used for instructors and students for several actions, as, I, as we saw, to detect problem in resources, to use it so to support the fleet classroom methodology, to evaluate students. And of course, the limitations are very important. Right now, it does not scale well in, co in the current release for, for lots of people. We have only tested in the case studio that I just uh, presented. We need to update it to a newer release of Open edX. And of course, we have a list of minor books and um, things that we would like to improve. The future of Analyze, or main objective right now, would be to uh, provide a new stable release which scales decently well for a small courses. We, from 200 students or something of the sort, we already have had a, a master thesis student doing an implementation, and we need to add it to, to, the, to a new release. We need to, to adapt it to, newer version, to the newer open release version of Open edX, and of course, fix books and improvements. Uh, we also want to provide uh, new parameters, uh, a bit more complex, about the behavior of the students with the different contents of the course. We already had another master thesis doing this, which would be uh, add to, to the newer release. And uh, of course, we want to test it in more experiences. And in, eventually, we would like to make a, a simple recommendation system for open edits with few rules, but some that we are certain, based, based on all the research that we've been doing in Khan Academy 
and open ended data, uh, and also uh, after applying all the statistical analysis on, in our research. So one last slide, uh, if you are interested from a point of view of the institution, how UC3M is handling uh, to provide MOOCs in edX and at the same time as POCs in open edX and how the, the university is organized. I'll be giving another talk in 15 minutes or something of the sort. Uh, thank you very much for listening. There are questions? Yeah? Uh, what kind of feedback did you get from both the instructors and the students the case study and the So he asked about what kind of feedback we got about students and instructors. And instruct the instructor, which, which was uh, only one in this course, was very pleased because he was, he was a flipped classroom methodology, meaning that uh, it has uh, some contents we are, which are put in the course and some other contents are uh, done in classroom, the exercise mainly. So he was able to know if the students were uh, progressing adequately in the, in the contents to be able to explain the exercises. And in the case of students, uh, in this experience I'm not, uh, I don't know about that. I, I'm not sure if we have feedback. It's in the project somehow, but I'm, I'm not sure. And in the evaluation accessibility survey that we did, which 40 people, they also behave as students and they were also very pleased. We have a lot of improvements from, from this uh, evaluation, of course, but as I say, we don't have a lot of people we can w who can work on this, so step by step. He asked about uh, we divide the analytics with a chapter. You said you mean this. So these are the the, the higher hierarchy of. Uh, yeah, yeah. It goes to MongoDB and gets the hierarchy from the course. Yeah. Yeah. So he asked uh, about, uh, we had uh, first individual analysis and then aggregate analysis of all the class. And if we have thought about uh, compars comparing uh, students and also. Yeah, students. yeah and also with the, the entire class, yeah. So um, probably you can first compare. Uh, we have not done that automatically, but you can switch from one student to another and compare them in the same graphic. So that probably can, uh, can be useful too. And from the perspective of the entire class, um, we, in, in the other tool that I presented before, we compared always the, with the mean value of the class in the Alaska in the Khan Academy. But here we have, well, you can, we can check uh, the entire class and then go to one student. And that may be, for example, if you want to check the grades uh, and you want to, and then you want to go to the entire class, you could compare, compare it this way. But, we don't have it like a, a bar which set the, the mean for the class right now, but it can be useful too, but right now, no. Yes? Do you know why it doesn't scale well? Well, yeah, basically, right, right now it didn't scale well. Uh, our main problem was that every time that the, sorry, uh, he asked about the why, if I know why it doesn't scale well. Uh, so the main problem at the beginning was that, um, when we make every time the, when the scheduler called the analytics API every time, it would take all the tracking logs events from the start. Meaning that instead of uh, processing only the new events, uh, it would process again everything. So logically this is exponentially, goes exponentially increasing. It would be feasible, feasible. So right now the project that we did was for those metrics we, which are able to be aggregate we could cal uh, calculate uh, the metric each, for example, the, the, for example, the time in each resource. That's a, it can be aggregated perfectly with no problem. You can calculate today, calculate tomorrow, and the next day, and just make a sum of all the days. So in this case, it's possible. For other metrics, for example, uh, 
actually few of them, for example, this one where you get the different video time, this is not possible because it requires also the previous events. So you have to make an algorithm which calculates from all the uh, play to a stop, uh, which is a different video time to get the progress. So for this, in this case, it needs also the previous events and it's not aggregate. You, can, you cannot aggregate the data. So for in this case, you cannot do it. And right now we made this implementation and we need to test it in another experience. And of course, if you wanna make it better, you have to, to use uh, big data technologies. You have to go through uh, another tools. Right now it's only the server, the OpenEdX directly. Yes? Uh, so the first metric was, I uh, sorry, <laughs> the first. If we have a predefined set of metrics, and uh, the answer is yes, it's predefined, and right now uh, instructors cannot uh, configure it, make any kind of configuration. The idea was also to to include visualizations per per group. Meaning if you want to watch uh, groups of students, for example, uh, in this case, we made uh, all the groups of students who got uh, proficiency, pass, or fail, so you would be able to watch each of the visualizations per a group, but this is not configurable right now. It's, I think it shouldn't be uh, very hard to do it, but right now it's not. And the other question was about if we... Uh, Data Sorry, second? Yes. Yeah, that's. Well, actually, when you, you close the browser, I think there is a stop event. Okay, so thank you very much.